Out of CBS2 investigation, a federal lawsuit will require all automakers to install technology that could detect drunk and impaired driving. Here's why that is so, so important. In 2021, more than 1,300 people were killed on Illinois roads. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration estimates 47% of driving deaths in Illinois involved alcohol. And one McHenry mom says the new technology would have saved her son's life. CBS2 investigator Megan Hickey has been uncovering her family story for years and the loopholes she's been fighting to close. Megan. Right, Brian Murray, in particular loopholes that allowed the drunk driver in her son's case to keep his driver's license. She said tonight they are celebrating Austin's memory with one more change in the books. Do you think that this technology would have saved, off, saved Austin's life? Yes, the vehicle wouldn't have driven. Absolutely, Austin would be here. Sheila Lockwood lost her 23-year-old son, Austin, to a drunk driver on June 10th, 2018. Every single day since, she's been trying to make it harder for drunk drivers to get behind the wheel. I think he's helping me, giving me strength. I want to make him proud. We want these um, safety measures to be to be passive. On Monday, Lockwood was joined by Representative Jan Schakowsky and Illinois State Police Director Brendan Kelly. The technology has been there for some time. Anybody who knows history, there was a lot of resistance to seatbelts. There was a lot of resistance even to airbags. To show support for a new law that gives the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration just three years to develop rules that will require all new passenger vehicles to be equipped with advanced drunk and impaired driving prevention technology. All vehicles must have this technology by 2026. In just a few months, the driver responsible for Austin's death, Eric Laban, will be set free after a three-year prison sentence. The sentence was too short for Lockwood, who has since helped to successfully pass a law that created a five-year minimum sentence in Wisconsin. She's also worked on efforts to loop all the states into the driver's license compact, which improves information sharing between states, a loophole that allowed Laban to legally drive for more than a year after Austin's death. Death. While we're still a few years from seeing the impaired driving technology in all cars, Lockwood is counting it as a victory. No family you ever should ever go through what we've had to go through because the driver will be out living his life and we are left with a life without Austin. Now again, this is for all newly manufactured cars and the law doesn't specify right now exactly what type of monitoring will be required. That will be for NHTSA and the car manufacturers to work out in the years to come. Live along the Diane Ryan, Megan Hickey, CBS2 Investigators. Megan, thank you.